All right, meantime, it's another rough start to the trading day as fears of COVID-19 continue to shake investor confidence and disrupt supply chains all around the world. Asian markets not doing any better than here. This as a mad dash is underway in Big Pharma to race for a cure. Joining us to discuss, investigative journalist Ben Swan. So Ben, can you give us a, a quick update as to exactly how bad the markets are looking right now? Yeah, I, another very tough day uh, to say the <laughs> least. So essentially what we're seeing right now, uh, markets are down about 450 to 500 points, which is better than we started the day because we started the day about 1,050 down, which is, you know, about 4,000 points down for the entire week. Uh, it's really rough shape. Just to give you some idea of how bad it is, uh, this is the worst it's been since 20. 2008, excuse me, uh, in terms of uh, the market being down, but it's the fastest we've seen a 10% correction, the fastest we've dropped by 10% in history. So it's never, never. happened this fast before, no. Uh, wow. It's pretty significant. We're talking about a lot of these industries that we're looking at right now uh, that are being affected, oil sectors, technology sectors, uh, utilities and, and consumer stables, all of them down about 10 to 12% for the week. So the big question is, as we go into the end of this week, and we kind of predicted, you know, Chris I and I, uh, who host Boom Buzz, have been talking a lot about this. The expectation uh, for us was that as of Friday, we were not going to recover or see anything bounce back, and that if, we, if there is a recovery, we start to bounce back, more than likely that happens on Monday, not on Friday. Having said that, it's a tough way to end the week, and certainly there's going to be a lot of anxiety going into the start of next week. So in what ways are coronavirus impacting global supply chains? Is it just that the factories are at a standstill for fears of, of the workers have, getting contraction, or, or, or does this go deeper than so, that? So there are two points to that, and this is very important. The first point is, in terms of the actual supply chains, there has been a disruption in the supply chain, certainly. A lot of factories in China, and we've talked about this for several weeks now, um, have delays in products that they are creating. There are a lot of workers who have not been able to go back to work. Now, in uh, the latest numbers out of China show that the number of infections in China was only new infections was only about 327, right. which is the lowest it's been since late January. So that's right. good news for them. So there are workers who are now going back to work. But let's be clear about this. From what we can tell so far, the drop that we've seen this week in markets is not related to supply chain disruptions. Okay. It is not connected to that. There is a fear in the market right now. There is fear that if this thing spreads and it spreads into the U.S. and people won't be able to go to work and go to school. So there's fear about that. Right. But I believe very strongly that the market corrections we've seen this week, while the coronavirus is a catalyst up front for what's happened, it is not the direct cause of this, that the markets are not intentionally saying or, or authentically saying we're terrified about the coronavirus and therefore sell, sell, sell. Okay. I think the market has been over leveraged for a long time. The Fed has been pumping cheap money into the market for a long time, and we have been overdue for a correction for several years. Okay. And so this might be the catalyst that, that begins that. Obviously, we've now had that 10%, 12% correction. Okay. The question is, do we slip all the way down to a 20% and into a, uh, a bear market, or do things come back? Okay, uh, let's switch gears over to Big Pharma, because yeah. share prices for them, for big name uh, mm -hmm. drug makers, going through the roof as, as their labs are, are racing to find either a cure or a vaccine to protect against it. Um, estimates say it'll be a year, though, Ben, before any drug can truly be developed and yes. put out to market. Yes. But when it is, the big question here is how affordable is it going to be? Will, you know, drug makers, pharma bro, essentially the whole world because no. of this vaccine? No, they, they, they won't. Uh, a couple things on that. Number one, you're right. It's going to take at least a year to get a vaccine out at, at minimum. Um, whether it will even be very effective, we don't know, because one thing that we're learning about the coronavirus or COVID-19, as you call it, um, it mutates and it is mutating somewhat quickly. And so whether or not a virus that is or vaccine, excuse me, that's created based on what we know today is right. effective in a year, we don't even know that, right? Uh, the pricing I do not think will be priced in, at, at insane amounts and, and governments will make sure that doesn't happen because that doesn't work for governments anywhere. What's much more likely to happen, though, instead of resting on the laurels of, oh, there will be a vaccine and pharmaceutical companies will save us, is the more likely scenario that we're in, starting, about to go into March, and the weather's about to warm up. Right. And that is what typically kind of uh, runs off viruses. It's not, right. it's not 
pharmaceutical companies that get, get rid of them. It's the weather changing and warm weather. Viruses don't like warm weather. Uh, we saw this happen with SARS. SARS self-eradicated <laughs> long before a vaccine could be created to, to get rid of it. So, so it was never heated. Right, right so that's, never that's much more likely to be the scenario here. And, and just to clarify, in case the viewers didn't catch the pharma bro reference, we're right. talking about Martin Shkreli, yeah. who obviously hiked the prices of an HIV drug, number of drugs. Yeah. So they can obviously profit uh, over, put profits over people. Yeah. Um, but speaking of that, remember the story of how penicillin was discovered. Go back into your history books. Uh, Professor Alexander Fleming in London, he released it to the world because he knew it would benefit mankind. It would save lives. Those days are long over, Ben. You and I know that. But if Trump, presuming that a vax is discovered on his watch, right. uh, if he issued some sort of like a price control mm -hmm. on this uh, vaccine for maybe like in, in an executive order, would some politicize this life-saving drug and say, hey, this is a socialist price control. No, no one will criticize it at all. And Trump will do that, uh, more than likely. Because look, the, Trump's biggest fear right now is coming true. His fear is, is that he will not have the economy he wants to run on during this election, that he will not have the stock market where it's supposed to be. Now, if we come out of this and there's this correction and we the stock market starts to go back up again over the next couple of days and weeks, he's fine, no problem. But if we slip back another 10%, 20% and we fall into a bear market, that is not what he's looking for. And if it truly becomes related to, because as I said right now, it is not truly related to the coronavirus, but if fears for the market do become sure. connected to that, and and if there is a vaccine, you better believe that he will not allow that to be held back or to look in any way like it's harming people. Remember, Trump ran before as a populist and he governs as a populist, even if you disagree with his policies. Right. That's how he positions himself. He is certainly not going to position himself as a, uh, you know, capitalist, do whatever you want, especially against a Bernie Sanders who will be calling <laughs> for free vaccines for sure, everyone. Right. So that, that would be a bad. That'll never happen. <laughs> that would look bad. I thought you were referencing the, that he was a, a germaphobe. So he's also that. So there's that. Yeah. All right, Ben, we can catch you again later today at 4 p.m. on Boom Bus. Thank you for weighing in on this. You got a minute. Thanks.